This is Benin City, capital of Edo State in southern Nigeria. It's was the seat of the ancient Benin Empire, one of the most powerful empires during the 15th and 16th century. But beneath the pride from its past, too many episodes of the familiar story of an endangered youth and its communities, susceptible to irregular migration. I was convinced with what I was seeing on Facebook, social media, but she never told me the risk that was involved in it. Traveling through land to Libya was a deadly mission, and it was a suicide mission. But then I never knew. It was when I embarked on the journey, I knew it was a, it was a suicide mission. Though I was not really ready to travel the wrong way, but I was pushed to travel because the person deceived me with lots of words like don't worry when you get there after three months they'll finish paying me and you'll be a madam of your home i saw a friend who talked to me about uh, a journey and i migrated to libya so my journey to libya was hell for me it's horrible it's a suicide mission it's a journey i will not even advise my enemy to embark on for those who survived the hotbed of horror in the Sahara, an extremely dangerous sail across the Mediterranean Sea, a new chapter opens up as they get another chance at a new life on new terms. Certainly not the type they might have freely chosen. Even when some are lucky to return in one piece, coming face to face with the same environment they had left in the first place is often the first point of uncertainty for what the future holds. Often when they return, it's a return to the beginning, to the community they left, further behind where they were when they left. In the last three years, more than 5,000 returnees have been received and reintegrated into the society in Edo State. 
Although difficult for the returnees, for them it is better than the horror they experienced. They spend years trying to recover from the emotional scars, physical injuries, stigma and financial loss. Happiness and Canaan are Libya returnees. What they found on their way to the supposed better life was all too familiar. The starvation, the bartering, the sexual abuse, the servitude. Their experiences are intertwined, but they have risen above all odds to become symbols of hope, moving from community to community, sharing their experiences. Happiness became desperate to make the journey to Europe after the death of a third child. She also wanted to find the husband whose whereabouts had remained unknown after he also embarked on a similar journey. Because I experienced a lot of difficulties, rape, different challenges on that route. It was not easy for me. Well, the journey started from Bini to Kanu, then from Kanu to Niger. When we got to Niger, now we are, I mean, uh, from Kanu, we crossed the border to Niger. Crossing the border was hell. Imagine three people in a bike at night, and there's no light in that bike, on that bike. Everywhere dark. Then we had to cross to Niger. So that was how we crossed down to Niger. When we got to Niger, we slept there till the next day. And then um, another bus, a bus came and took us out of that place. Then they took us down to Agadez. Before we got to Agadez, in fact, some persons fainted on that because we have to pass through. There's one desert that you pass before you get to Agadez. In that desert, our bus got spoiled. Then we have to come down because it was, it's not just, it's not a, a desert, but it was Kota around that area. If you are looking at it, it looks as if you are seeing fire. Then we get down from the place. The, you can't stand on the floor because of the heat that is coming out from the place. Then we have to push the vehicle because now the vehicle is bad. We have to push. Then we started pushing. We started pushing. From there, some people started fainting because of the sun. Then we managed to leave that place. Even the healers that was ahead of us got burned. Everybody inside that healers got burned. Nobody survived it. Then I slept in Agadez for three days. No bath, nothing. Even if you're on your mazes, you are just on your own. There's nothing for you to use. Then after that, we entered the Sahara Desert. But when we started the journey to Agadez, to Libya, that is when I knew that it is even better for me to suffer and die in Nigeria than for me to die in desert. Because I have never seen a situation whereby somebody will be looking for water to drink. There is no water. Even somebody's urine for you to drink. Somebody will come to you and be begging you for urine to drink. Where would you get the urine from when you have not taken food or water? A lot of people died in that place. My friend that we left together, she was pregnant. That girl was raped to death. Five men, those soldier men that stayed at the church checking point, they raped her to death because they saw her keeping money inside her private part. So they took her, and when they brought her the money from there, they raped her till she died. We were all standing looking at the sun while they were raping her. And she died. Kenan, the eldest of three children, was forced to drop out of school and abandon a dream of becoming a laboratory technician after the death of her parents. Thinking of a better life, she took the plunge and decided to go search for greener pastures in Europe. But she got more than she bargained for. When I got to Agades, the vehicle they use in loading us was, let me say, is a sardine. You know the way sardine is inside the camp. That was the small vehicle they used to load us. From there, we spent two days inside that vehicle. From there to Agades. That's from Niger now to Agades. When I got to Agades, that was when I knew that 
was, that it was a suicide mission. I wanted to come back to Nigeria because I was not comfortable. But the, the Arab man, which was going to push us to death, I said, I can't go back. That for me to go back, that I will die. So my friend said, I have to, since I already made up my mind that I have to embark on it, I shouldn't worry. I spent two weeks in Agadez there. After that two weeks, they told us that we are going to embark, that we are going to Libya now, that we are going to pass through desert. And when I entered that desert, the day we moved, it was about 50 hillos. 50 hillos, we entered the desert. When I entered the desert, that was when I knew that. I, don't, I didn't even have it in mind that I would survive, I would make it because when I entered the desert, the bones I was seeing on the ground, there's a skeleton I'm talking about. It was human being skeleton. Then, inside that 50 hillos, up to about 10 hillos miss because it's inside the desert, there's no road. They use this compass to read the road. So the moments you miss, you, meet, you just miss your, your, your track. Then the Arab man that carried us in one particular hill, us, they will load us up to about 45, 47. I imagine a hill us loading people, 47, 45. It was hell. Then inside that hill, us, we were up to about 25 that survived. The girl that was sitting in front of me inside that desert, I never knew that the girl was even dead. I was like, ah, you shift, make I sit down where? The girl, before you know, so I pushed her, she threw away her head. So I didn't know that she was already gone. And the moment somebody dies at that desert, the Arab man will tell you Alagali. Alagali means that God night take him. Then you just drop it, you use stone to round it, you continue your journey. You must not cry, you, because if you cry, they will kill you and you follow the person. So once I spent 14 days inside the desert. Inside the desert, people run mad, because the sun is too closer to the head that you, you feel it. Then after three days, now no water. The way they drop us, there was one where that we discover inside the desert. Then we all run there to go and drink water. Do you know what happened? We never knew that somebody has already died and decayed inside that well because you cannot see it, it's very dark. So we have to pull our cardigan, because nothing to fetch water. We pull our cardigan, our wrapper, we tie it together. When we tie it together, then we chuck it inside the well and bring it out. Then excuse it, all of us started dragging to sip from that cloth. Inside there, we lost so many souls. Knowing that this problem needs to be tackled from the communities in Edo State, as in other parts of Nigeria, safe migration awareness campaigns are being conducted and sponsored by several international and local institutions, such as the IOM and the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons. My papa here made this market today. They could not hear me. This chance of survival for this road is not reached 50 50 than 95 and 5 percent. It is one of those days chosen for grassroots advocacy. This time, volunteers of International Organization for Migration have selected Ogida Market in Benin City as a location for the advocacy program and rural awareness campaign. Megaphones and posters in hands, volunteers under the migration and messengers program of the IOM are going from stall to stall addressing traders and customers. A lot of my friends here in my community has passed through that same route and they have succeed in making it in life. A lot of successful stories around my communities. So I was inspired by those successful stories. Not, not thinking about the disadvantage of what I would pass through, not even thinking of getting more information about the journey. Yeah, we are about 35 persons that left Urumi. We went to Benin because a friend of mine connected me to Boga, which is the connection man, and we agree on the price and he said we should pay 450,000 Naira. And I told him I'm giving him 300,000 Naira. So when I get to Libya, I will pay the remaining 150. That was an agreement. We are back transiting to seaside, the Suprata, where they normally cross people from Libya to Europe. 
I was trancain. When, when we mean trancain in the local dialect is uh, you were kidnapped. You were kidnapped. Now if you are kidnapped, they will ask a huge ransom of money from you. And the funny part of this trancain we are talking about, it is Nigerians, blacks that are really doing this business, selling human beings. The modern day slavery still exists in Libya. A lot of them, when I was captured, it was my burger that sold us. Human beings like us. They took us down to an unknown location. We were under, under, underground for about months. We don't see light. We only eat once in a day, and that food is other. It's just a bread, no ingredients. Once in a day, I spent three months in that, in that, in that prison. It's a local prison. It's just a kidnapping. They will go kidnap you and sell you to Arab. The Arab will give them money, so on and so forth. With the light of hindsight, the Aritani's approach to life becomes different. They easily tell their stories, discouraging others from following that example. The main aim of the sensitization program is to ensure that the message gets to the young and old. No matter the little you are any, no matter what you are doing, big or small, be contented with what you have. Do not let anybody deceive you because there is a, there is a better life for you too. For there is a better life for you tomorrow. With your own hustling, you can make the green greener. So when I came back, I put it upon myself to volunteer to any organization at all that is playing positive role in this human trafficking and irregular migration in Nigeria. IOM has really tried for people like us and uh, they dedicated a lot of returned migrants who were supposed to be stranded in society. Because when coming back to Nigeria, you, 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 are, you are like starting afresh. You are starting at the bottom, you are starting afresh in life. Another initiative is the community theatre. It is a form of entertainment with succinct messages about the dangers of irregular migration.
For now, the Enlightenment train continues to move across communities, from markets to